Welcome, it's Friday, April 18th. I'm Charlie Lorenz, host of the Abalone Hunter Show, shot along the Mendocino Coast where I explain the many aspects of abalone hunting. Broadcasting today from Mendocino TV studio in the historic Union Lumber Company store in Fort Bragg, California. From planning your dives to serving abalone to your friends and family, we will bring the latest diving news from the north coast of California. Looks like the winds are coming from the north to northwest. What does this mean for us as abalone hunters? During this time of the year, those winds push south and create a longshore current that hugs close to our shoreline. In some of the coves, such as Casper Cove and Russian Gulch, this current isn't too strong unless it gets super windy with an additional outgoing tide. A stronger current on the south side can develop. Dive sites that have a Longer, more exposed beach, such as the many headlands on our coast, have a longshore current that can push a diver south, away from the hunter's original entry point, which is fine as long as you plan ahead of time and pick the safe exit point that is south of your original entry point. Also keep in mind your abalone storage device, the ab float, can drift away from you if it is not anchored. Another way to resolve this problem is to have your dive buddy watch the ab float. The dive buddy can then push the float to the diving partner that may be needing assistance when surfacing from the dive. In this manner, no one is without the safety of the float as a resting device between dives. Seas are going to be approximately 9 feet to 10 feet, which is fairly large, but may not be a problem, especially on the lowest part of the tide, due to the waves being broken up by the rocky reefs that protect some of our coves. Water movement generated by those seas can cause a lot of back and forth underwater movement called surge. Not a too big a deal if you are hunting in the knee deep of water. The depth rock pickers generally work in. For divers working in five, six, five to six feet of depth, this surge can be a nuisance and you have to think of what can you hang on to so you won't get pushed away from that trophy ab. Holding on to a rocky substrate or something attached to the rock such as the base of kelp, is no easy matter and trying to pry the ab off the rock at the same time can be difficult. Manageable as long as you can hold your breath long enough to accomplish your goal. If you can hold your breath for at least 30 seconds, you can find and pick abalone. Practice holding your breath at home. If you can hold your breath for a minute out of the water, you should be able to hold your breath for at least 30 seconds underwater. While practicing your breath hold at home, try some exercising at the same time. Remember, you will exert some energy kicking and swimming down to find that abalone. The more exertion you use, the more oxygen your body uses up, therefore cutting back on the breath hold times. If you can minimize the exertion during the dive, a longer breath hold is imminent. But all in all, it's a workout to get abalone. You can't just say abracadabra and whoosh, there it is. But keep in mind, the ocean conditions can change quickly and swells could either calm down or become larger. So have a backup plan, a secondary exit point, a secondary dive site, especially if the first original exit point becomes too difficult to work with. Where would I dive this weekend? If these north winds get too strong and seas get too choppy, I would dive on the north side of the coves where it's protected from the north wind and waves. Portuguese Cove has extreme protection from these north winds. Casper Cove, Russian Gulch, both have the same. Or don't push the limits. Go have a picnic on the beach instead and enjoy the nice sunny weather we're going to have this weekend. Or visit downtown Fort Bragg or Mendocino and enjoy our local shops and diners. Better just abort the hunt and be safe so you can come back another day to find a calmer sea. Keep in mind, Rough seas can make for poor visibility, which can be frustrating because it's hard to find abalone due to their camouflage that makes them look like more like rocks than something edible. Visibility reports right now are about 10 feet, better than last week, but the weather changes every day, so contact subsurface progression for the most updated information on weather conditions. If you go this weekend, and find yourself out there in the ocean hunting for abalone, I wish you lots of fun and good hunting. 
This is Charlie Lorenz, the abalone hunter.